Okay, well, I've come out here to sunny California to interview Canadian-born stoner icon Tommy Chong, but he's not at his home in Los Angeles. No, he's actually here in a prison somewhere in the middle of nowhere, serving nine months for selling bongs on the internet. Chong was busted as part of the Drug Enforcement Administration's Operation Pipe Dreams that targeted sales of drug paraphernalia. So how do you respond to the rumors that the DEA busted you because you're Canadian? <laughs> because I'm Canadian. Uh, they're after the Canadians. Uh, no, no, they're not. They, uh, they didn't even know I was Canadian. You know, they had no idea. They just busted me because I was Tommy Chong, you know, the notorious... Um, poop and pot. Chong claims he pleaded guilty to avoid having his wife and son charged. He says he was told he'd get nothing worse than house arrest. Why do you really think you're in here for nine months? <clears throat> because I made a movie called Up in Smoke <laughs> and we made fun of cops. Hello, Radio Dispatch. This is codenamed Hard Hat. Codenamed Hard Hat. Do you read me? Over. What's that, Hard Ass? <laughs> you know, there's people out there who say, I'm glad he's in jail, because that guy's, you know, made millions and millions of dollars being a drug pusher for the last 25 years, you know, in popular culture. Yeah, well, I, there again, uh, like I say, I just reflect what's going on. I don't, I didn't create it. I didn't invent pot. Scott Immler used to run the Cannabis Resource Center in West Hollywood, perfectly legal under California state law, but then busted by the feds in 2001. Now he lives here in Silver Lake, California. Let's find out why his life went to pot. So you can't grow weed, but you've got a lot of weeds. Yeah, we got a lot of weeds. <laughs> That's they, they okay. They grow on their own. You're allowed to have the weeds. Yeah. You know, the flowers and the roses and the vegetables are fine, but no marijuana plants, not yet. Imler's Cannabis Center supplied pot to more than 900 patients suffering from AIDS and cancer to relieve their pain. When charged, he faced decades in jail. But last November, a sympathetic judge gave him the lightest sentence possible, a year's probation. How does it feel to be on probation? Have you always, have you thought of yourself uh, as a troublemaker all your life? <laughs> uh, no, actually I haven't. Uh, we were the By the Book Cannabis Club. Uh, we worked real closely with the Sheriff's Department and the city officials and the public health officials in Los Angeles County. So no, we, we didn't consider ourselves the radicals, quite the contrary. Um, so we were a bit surprised when the DEA came in and, and shut our program down. Okay, let's face it, so far I've been talking to a lot of pro-pop people, stoners and their supporters. Maybe it's time to talk to the man. That's right, the United States Department of Justice, Drug Enforcement Administration, Los Angeles Division. And I'm going to speak to Special Agent Jose Martinez. Agent Martinez? Yes, yeah. Gian Gamashi, CBC Television. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's going on? How big a problem is marijuana in California? It's, it's of concern because it's, it's, you know, it's a gateway drug that leads to, to, to the use of other, other drugs. As a gateway drug, it is absolutely true. But it can be a, a gateway to freedom, you know? There's been heroin addicts uh, that, uh, you know, they use pot to, to, to come off the heroin, you know? Just, it, it doesn't, they don't like it, but it, it helps. Our mission is to enforce laws, federal laws. Uh, and w what that means, the bottom line is that it's, uh, Marijuana it has no medicinal value in the United States. Has no medicinal value. Has no medicinal value. I, I don't understand why, um, you know, the medical use is such a sticking point for the government. Uh, maybe they feel like as they open the door, um, um, you know, they'll lose complete control. How do you make sense of the fact that there's this thing that millions of Americans are doing, recreationally or medicinally, every single day? that is a criminal activity. I think there's a lot of things that, that Americans are doing that are some, of some one way or another are, are, are illegal. Obviously, you know, uh, people speed, people still run red lights, uh, people still run stop, stop lights. Uh, is it safe? No. Is it right? No. Can people get hurt? Yes. You implied earlier that you're, you're basically in here being made an example of. Yeah. Do you think it's working? Oh, it's, it's the opposite effect. <laughs> it's like everything else this administration doing. It's promoting. I mean, Cheech and I are more popular now than we've ever been. Does that make you glad you're here? 
Well, no, I, I, you know. If I mean, I, is there a moral victory of some sort in there for yeah, you? Th yeah, yeah, there's a definitely that, that, that to it, you know. It's sad that I'm in here. It's sad that, that the administration have, has, you know, grasping for straws, they, they come up with me. You know, I, I did a joke that got me in here. I said, the only weapons of mass destruction they ever found were my bongs. And it's true. <laughs> and they didn't laugh. They, they thought, nah, you know, I should go to jail for that one. What's a final thought uh, to uh, a nation of stoners up there in Canada? What do you have to say to your, your brethren up there? I'm coming. Save a tote for me. I'm, I'm, I'm moving back to Canada. Oh, it's just too crazy down here. You know, it's too crazy. In 1954, possession for the purpose of trafficking was added to the Canadian law books. Maximum penalty? 14 years in prison. You had to kill a dude to go to jail for longer. That reminds me, we got some work to finish off. Yeah, in a minute. My girlfriend Ann and I went around with Jim and Bob. They both smoke pot. That's jazz talk for marijuana. Why do you smoke? Makes me feel good. It relaxes me. And in my business, it's a tense business sometimes. Marijuana relaxes me because if I'm going to smoke, I'm not going to do any work. When I was 16, I went to a summer camp in Cornwall. It was an acting camp. And friends of mine came up for the weekend and were like, Jess, we scored some weed. And I was going like, oh my god, I am an actor. I guess I should try it. When I was in uh, grade 8 in Dauphin, Manitoba, I uh, did smoke a marijuana cigarette. <laughs> and so they rolled a joint for me and I smoked it. And after I smoked it, I was going, Ooh, I totally feel it. And that's when they told me it was tea. I was too nervous to be real, real good with that whole uh, THC thing. It didn't really work out for me. I never liked dope, and it always made me really paranoid and unhappy. So I couldn't write or anything on dope. And, you know, like I was much more of a booze bag. I can't smoke this stuff. I feel like I'm on LSD. It's crazy. Pot doesn't make me think of anything except feeling, thinking, oh, what did I just say? And, oh, that sounds really stupid. And I bet they all hate me. You know, once I went for a joint in a hotel, and I found that the chambermaid had purposely taken all my supplies. We used to refer to pot as rocket fuel because we would, uh, we would smoke up and have our sort of story meetings. I just had to go without it. Well, it wasn't the end of the world, but... Uh, but uh, I was opposed to it. I was opposed to stealing other people's thought. But we came up with some fantastic ideas and some great concepts. We couldn't write a word when we were stoned, but we came up with some great ideas. Well, back in the 70s, you know, they would, they would sit on the floor listening to music and for three hours, nobody saying anything. And then everybody would get up and say, wow, I had a great time and leave. is Vancouver, B.C., and this is what they call the pot block, and this is the New Amsterdam Cafe, which isn't actually a dubious name for this joint. No, because Vancouver is the New Amsterdam, the epicenter of all cravings come cannabis in our country of Canada. Got to the point I can't do anything if I'm not stoned now. I go to work stoned, I'm almost late for work now, and I'm stoned. 